Hello students, how are you? Today we will be starting off with the first chapter that is physical quantities, units and measurement. Now, since we are studying about physics, so obviously we will be dealing with physical quantities, right? So when we talk about physical quantities, there are two most important things that we need to be very very careful about. That whenever we are specifying any particular physical quantity, it needs to be specified by two things generally. That how much is the magnitude of it? What is the value of it? What is the numerical part of it? And what does that represent? So we, what does that represent? We'll be classifying it further to state it that there are some quantities which are known as scalar quantities and the other quantities are known as the vector quantities. Yeah? So when we talk about scalar quantities, so scalar quantities are the ones which have only a magnitude part. Whereas when we talk about the vector quantities, vector quantities denote or they need two things to be specified. That is, what is the value of the magnitude? Obviously that is a prerequisite and in which direction that particular physical quantity is being measured. Yeah? So this is the starting point of our system, of our physical definition of all the things that are yet to come. So that is what we will be covering up in this particular chapter. I am breaking up this chapter into a different set of units. So this is the first unit that we will be discussing about which is nothing but the introduction to this particular unit. Yeah? Okay. So when, since I am saying that this is the introduction, so let us understand about the learning outcomes. So since we are trying to study about this, we should know what we are expecting, what we are expected to know once we are done with this particular chapter. Yeah? Okay. So the first thing in this is to understand what is a physical quantity. The first thing to know in this is to know as to what exactly is a physical quantity. When we are saying it's a physical quantity, obviously there, it should be specified that that has to do something in the, the physical realm of all. It cannot be something imaginary. Yeah? Then, when we are specifying this physical quantity, in that case, there has to be some unit and there has to be a numerical magnitude. So there should be some unit associated with it as well as there should be a numerical magnitude that should be associated with that particular physical quantity. Right? Now, there are different physical quantities that we come across. For instance, for instance, when you are moving, when you are moving from one point to the other, there is something known as distance that is known. Similarly, there is also a, another quantity that is related to distance which is known as a displacement. Right? So that is the classification. Further, when you are moving from one point to the other, in that case obviously there is something known as speed. When you are moving from one point to the other, obviously apart from the distance, there is the time that is spent as well. So there is a speed that is involved. So the next thing to understand is to know what are the primary or the base quantities. So in terms of the primary or the base quantities, we need to identify, we need to express other physical quantities. Right? For instance, the distance, time, mass, these are the base quantities. In terms of these quantities, we express the rest of the things. Fine? Then, once we are done with this particular thing, then we go further and say that what are the what is the classification between a scalar and a vector quantity. So as I mentioned, scalar quantities are the quantities that have only magnitude part. Obviously the unit will be associated since it is a physical quantity but there is no direction that is associated with a scalar quantity. 
right? So a scalar quantity represents only the magnitude. It does not have a direction. But when you associate a direction as well, let's say you're coming from school, did you go from the north to south direction, east to west direction, south to west direction, or which direction did you specify? So in that case, we say that there is a direction involved, and therefore the vector quantity is the one that is. Finally, we'll be ending up with that in this particular chapter with the topic which is known as the errors. and the accuracy. So what does this actually mean? So when you are measuring any particular quantity, obviously you will be using some physical measurement tools, right? It can be a meter scale, it can be some other system. It depends on which system you are into. So obviously there can be some amount of errors that can be, that can crop up. It can be Let's say if you are trying to measure the time period of a pendulum, then somehow the air starts blowing up. Obviously, the time period is going to vary. Similarly, if you are using the sand clock to measure the time period, right? In that case, it may be possible that sometimes some sand sand coagulates and it forms kinds of colloids, and in that case, the time period increases. So these are some random errors that can crop up. And when there are random errors that crop up, obviously what happens as a result is that the result that you have obtained is not 200% accuracy. That is, it is not equal to the actual value that is expected, right? And therefore, therefore, we say that there is some limit of accuracy that you can achieve with a particular system of units, right? So this is all that we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. Hopefully the learning outcomes are clear to you. So I'll be starting off with the first thing that is to understand about units and dimensions first of all in our next topic. Yeah? Thank you. Enjoy the day.